This article from Android Central is talking about the real reason the OnePlus Nord isn't launching in North America. If you're not aware, I think July 21st is when they are talking about bringing the Nord uh, to India and Europe. I think that's the announcement, or it's going to get announced on the 21st. There's some live streaming event, if I remember correctly. So uh, the OnePlus Nord exists to increase OnePlus's market share in India. Uh, the Nord is turning out to be one of the most exciting phones from the Chinese manufacturer in recent years. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's aimed at the mid-range segment, starting with the OnePlus 7 Pro. OnePlus Switch focused to the flagship category and set its sights on Samsung and Google. And while we got the OnePlus 7T last year for 600 bucks and the OnePlus 8 a few months ago for 700, it's clear that OnePlus is increasingly looking to the flagship segment. That, that's what makes the OnePlus Nord so enticing. The phone is powered by a Snap 765G chipset. This is the chipset that is reportedly coming on the Pixel 5. It's in the LG Velvet. Uh, it's coming on the new Moto G. 5G plus and 5G, I think as well. I have an article about that, but we'll talk about that in a bit also. Uh, and is the first device from OnePlus to offer dual 32 megapixel plus eight megapixel cameras at the front. Uh, the phone is also confirmed to retail for under 500 bucks with OnePlus positioning it as a Pixel 4a rival thanks to quote flagship level cameras. There's only one problem. The Nord will not be releasing in North America. Uh, at least from what I read, it's going to be in very uh, limited supply. I think that was the term for it for the U.S. So um, I don't know. Maybe maybe they're not even really looking at the U.S. as a potential market. Uh, the phone will uh, instead be sold in Europe and India with a, there you go, quote, highly limited beta kinging off in the U.S. that will let a few OnePlus fans get their hands on the Nord. There's a simple reason why the phone isn't launching in the U.S. and it has to do with margins. OnePlus is setting itself up as a mainstream player in the U.S. and that involves carrier partnerships. That kind of sucks. I, I hate I hate the fact that I'm not I don't really care about carrier partnerships. Just make an unlocked phone and sell it to the consumer and then make it work on the networks. I don't I am not on board with this whole carrier partnership kind of deal. OnePlus teamed up with T-Mobile starting with the 6T. And this year, the company partnered with Verizon on the 8. OnePlus is OnePlus also started selling its phones on Amazon US with the OnePlus 8 series. And all of these partnerships require a lot of inventory and overhead. That's not how OnePlus usually operates. It has always relied uh, on manufacturing phones in small batches. If you tried purchasing a OnePlus phone in the past, you might have seen intermittent availability issues on OnePlus's website. But that model doesn't work when dealing with a carrier like Verizon, Verizon, which has a vast retail network, or an online retailer like Amazon that guarantees two-day deliveries. To understand why the OnePlus Nord won't be debuting in the US, we'll have to first take a look at OnePlus's strategy with the OnePlus 8 series. The 8 and 8 Pro cost a lot more than in, than their predecessors. And while some of it has to do uh, with the fact that both phones have Qualcomm's uh, Snap 865 chipset with a 5G modem, there's also the fact that OnePlus now has a lot of overhead in terms of maintaining adequate inventory for retail and online channels. That overhead leads to added costs, and those costs are added to the retail price of the phones. Again, for me, I'm just like, make the phone that you're good at making make it available for all the carriers and sell the phone outright. I, I mean, I maybe, you know, obviously when you have them at carriers, there's probably a bigger push. You know, you're able to show them at stores and demo them and then people are more inclined to get them with whatever offers that these carriers give. But maybe because we're more on the tech side and like we know what to look for, they, they're not reaching out to a market that they could, but I don't know. Uh, at the same time, I feel like that's why channels like this exist because uh, then we can help consumers try to pick the right product. But who am I, right? I'm just a small fish, you know, 
uh, trying to like help people out. So uh, obviously my my reach is not as big as Verizon's or T-Mobile's or whoever. Uh, if you need a further proof, just look at the pricing of the 8 and 8 Pro in India. The OnePlus 8 variant with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage is available for 45,000 rupees, which comes out to the equivalent of $590, a full $110 less than what the OnePlus 8 costs in the US. Then there's the 8 Pro for $735. So these are definitely a lot cheaper. For context, that's a full $165 less than what the phone retails in the US. Uh, OnePlus is undoubtedly losing out on margins with each sale of the 8 and 8 Pro in India, but the Chinese company is willing to forego short-term profits because it gets to maintain its position as the leading manufacturer in the premium category. In a nutshell, that's the reason for the OnePlus Nord's existence. The phone will go and sell, uh, go on sale in India for under $400, allowing OnePlus to position the device as a premium offering and in doing so bolster its market share in the country. So, okay, now the only way to get the OnePlus Nord to a sub $400 retail price while offering a Snap 765G chipset and 90 hertz display is to trim the margins even more. This makes sense in a market like India where OnePlus already has thin margins, but it would not work for other countries. We've already heard that that the Nord will debut at $565 in Europe. So that's out of contention for me. I wouldn't, I, I would most likely not buy this phone unless like the cameras were amazing or something amazing came on this phone because $565, I can spend my money better elsewhere. So you don't want to cut the margins here in the US because you want to make deals uh, with carriers or whatever it is, uh, or make your profit. That's fine. But I, I can't recommend it. I would have a harder time recommending that phone at a $565 price point just because you want 5G. Like that's not a selling point for me. Uh, and I don't think it really should be a selling point for anyone um, yet. Maybe later, maybe when the Nord 2 or the Nord 3 or whenever 5G becomes a thing really. Uh, but right now, no, there's really no point. Uh, and that's considerably more than the sub $400 figure the company is aiming to hit in India. There's also the fact that OnePlus is facing a lot of issues with inventory right now. The 8 and 8 Pro still not available widely two months after their launch. Combine that with the fact that OnePlus would not have been able to launch the Nord in the US for under 550. And it's easy to understand why the phone won't be debuting in North America. Fair enough. I mean, if, if you're going to be pricing it that much, then I, I mean, I, it's, it's no sweat off my back. Like I, I don't care then because I wouldn't be buying it. Not if it's going to be that expensive, uh, for all the mind share that OnePlus gets its devices account for a tiny fraction of global smartphone sales. India alone contributes to over 30% of OnePlus's overall sales. And the company only sold 1.8 million units in the country last year. Taking that into account, OnePlus's annual sales are just over 5.5 million units globally. So the fact that OnePlus devices attract such an outsized attention is down to clever marketing and the brand's focus on an enthusiast user base. The Nord is OnePlus's first real attempt at breaking through to a mainstream audience, and the company is essentially using India as a proving ground to see if its strategy pays off. For what it's worth, OnePlus has plans to launch a follow-up to the Nord later in the year. So if they're going to do a follow-up, then they're going to do the six-month thing? Is that, the, is that what they're doing with the Nord also? So we're going to have four different, well, six, if there's going to be an 8T, an 8T Pro, and then what, a Nord 2 or whatever they want to call it, we're going to see six phones in one year. That's a lot of phones. Uh, <laughs> okay, and so, yeah, they're saying uh, the, the upcoming... Uh, the successor to the Nord will then make its way to North America. The Nord is just the beginning one plan... OnePlus plans to launch a series of affordable devices over the coming months and years. According to my sources within OnePlus, we'll see another model later in the year with more modest specs that will be released globally. So this initial one is just a launch for mostly India and Europe then. And then <laughs> I feel like the only person who's going to get it, the only person who's going to get it in the US is MKBHD and other high-end uh, YouTubers, tech YouTubers. Those are the only ones who are going to get the Nord and nobody else. So they can make a video on on it and boast that hype or, or hype hype that hype up um 
and then regular people won't be able to get it. Uh, I, I don't know. So it says here, OnePlus will unveil the Nord on the 21st of July. And while North American customers will miss out on this particular device, that won't be the case later in the year. So if you were hoping for a Nord, then maybe it's best to really not uh, get your hopes up for it. If it was going to cost more than $550 anyway in the US, were you really going to buy it? Were you going to spend the money for it? Uh, I Again, I feel like at that price point, there are a lot of other phones that you can get that has better raw performance on a phone and um, something, you know, uh, 5G really shouldn't be the the uh, the end all, the be all end all of of your purchasing deci decision.